shot it in two studios. Uh, Cinecittà, which is the main film studio in Italy, that's where all the major Italian films were made, was what we used for all of our, our settings. Come on, Santa, let's go to work. Our cameraman had his own studio that we used for some of the smaller internal scenes. All the sets that were in the studios, the store, the department store, all of those things, Santa's home and everything, those were all sets that we constructed. The outdoor scenes, there was a little old village about home, I know, an hour from Rome. When you see the children running from all over to bring their piggy banks to Santa Claus and all, those scenes were shot in the town. Actually, one of the things that we thought would be difficult, Santa's workshop, we had to have elves. Well, of course, elves were beyond our ability, but we were able to find an acting community of little men who appear in the film as, as Santa's helpers. Well, I declare. We did find one interesting factor. We had to get reindeer for Santa's sleigh. We had live reindeer that we needed, and finding reindeer in Italy was not easy. You know, Santa has eight of them. We finally found four at the Milan Zoo, and the, the Milan Zoo allowed, allowed them to come down to Rome to be in the film. And we figured we could shoot from two different angles and get eight that way. But when we got to the studio, the first thing that happened is we found it was during the summer that reindeer shed their horns. So the next thing we had to do was have the prop department make horns for the reindeer, which was the job, but that got done. And then they had to be put on the little stubs that they had. I, at least, didn't realize that Lydia was a, a great animal lover. And she thought that it was very cruel to do this. Christmas is coming. Although we had the, uh, the zookeeper with us to make sure that everything we did was all right. When we were in the midst of shooting our scene, in came Lydia with the police. She had uh, wanted us arrested for cruelty to animals. Well, we had to stop shooting and explain the whole thing because Lydia wanted both myself as the producer and her husband for directing it arrested for cruelty. We finally explained enough and, and had the zookeeper there to explain that there was no cruelty going on, and we were able to go on with the shooting. I have no idea what Rosano said to his wife Lydia that night, but that was the end of that problem. Our original idea, even though a number of our actors were Italian, all of our major actors spoke English quite well. Rosano, of course, who's been a star in many English films, his wife Lydia, we also had uh, Misha Auer, who was a, a star in many films, who played Santa's assistant. The song is Prune. Prune, 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 Spoon, Moon, June, Prune, 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 Spoon. Lemon? No, Prune. Actually, the only one who, who did speak English but was not known here too well was Alberto Rabagliati, who was a, a famous film star and singer there who played Santa Claus. Look, your throne has come. You'd better practice before the kids come rushing in. But our feelings were that we would shoot the film in, in live sound and then just dub it into Italian afterwards. But we found out that at that point, nobody shot films with live sound in Italy. Everything was normally that was made there. It was a, a, an Italian, German, French co-production. And they would have stars from each of the countries in the film. And everybody spoke their own language. So one person would be speaking in German, one in French, one in Italian. And the stagehands and crew, you know, would just go about what they were doing and not have any consideration of noise because none of that was recorded. Afterwards, it was post-sync in all three different languages. So they were not accustomed to shooting with live sound. So it, we did it and had to do it in the, on the basis of trying to, with most, uh, almost all of the cast, speaking in English, but we uh, post-synced it after uh, the completion. And all of the sound studios and the rest that we used were at International Recording, which again was the major sound studio in Rome. Uh, that's where we had done our dubbing as well of the 
earlier films that I was involved with, a lot of the actors who were there were a little uncomfortable doing the post-thinking. It's done in loops with just like one sentence at a time. Sometimes they had difficulty in thinking with the, the film that they were looking at. And Misha Awa, who had absolutely no ability to think, every time he finished would turn around with his finger on his nose and say, I got it right on the nose, didn't I, Barry? And of course, we'd, I'd say, Misha, it was fine, but we'll do it once more. Paul had the musical director who had worked with him for, you know, for many years, Ray Carter, who wrote the songs with him. And there was a orchestrator, musical director, Bruno Nicolai, who did many, many films. He ended up taking the, the basis for the music and writing it as the rest of the background score. And then he conducted it with members of the orchestra from the Rome Opera. And then, of course, that's all put together in the mix along with the dubbing track. Mm -hmm. 